I believe. Uh, if you can say, uh, press the got it, uh, and we are live. So yeah, so once again, welcome to this MA Acting for Screen online information session. Um, and I am going to hand over to Armin and Lawrence. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Scott. Good evening, or good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to MA Acting for Screen. Uh, my name's Armin Gregory. I'm one of the tutors on the course, and I'm delighted that we are also joined uh, by Lawrence, Lawrence Perry, who is a, um, a graduate. Uh, Lawrence, go ahead, introduce yourself. No, I'm, I'm glad you introduced uh, myself for me. Uh, I hate large audiences unless I'm performing. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lawrence. Um, I'd recently graduated MA Acting for Screen on last year's course. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you've got um, and be as candid as I can um, about the course in front of Armin. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to uh, presume that everybody's had an opportunity to look at the prospectus online. Well, what I will begin with is a brief overview of, of the course, and then I will open it up uh, as, as soon as possible to uh, a Q&A session, because from my experience, it's always within the Q&A that you actually learn the most about what it's like doing, doing the course. Uh, so I'm just going to take you through a very brief uh, PowerPoint. <clears throat> okay, so uh, there are four units to the MA, techniques for acting on screen, critical context, screen study, performance projects, and sustained independent project. So I'll begin with techniques for acting on screen, unit one. And that lasts over the first uh, two terms of the course. Essentially, it's uh, teaching you the fundamental skills of, of acting. So they are there, they are listed for themselves. Uh, they pretty much all speak for themselves. Um, movement and dance, unfortunately, in Lawrence's year, due to the pandemic and the restrictions uh, imposed upon us, uh, we weren't able to incorporate the dance uh, component to the extent that we were have done in the past. Um, at present, uh, it is still under review, but we're hoping to potentially introduce uh, uh, some component of dance uh, early, early, early next year. Uh, why do we include dance um, as, uh, it, it, under the umbrella of movement? Well, uh, for many reasons, we know that dance uh, is uh, used a lot in, in film. Uh, it's not only used in its conventional sense, uh, where we have scenes of people, couples dancing, etc. But uh, the, the immediate example that springs to mind is Joaquin Phoenix's magnificent dance, uh, improvised dance in, in The Joker. So it's there to enhance one's uh, self-awareness of physicality through dance uh, within the frame, but in but in conventional dance, also dancing within the constraints of tempo and rhythm, et cetera. Uh, camera class, specifically techniques for how one relates to, to the camera, uh, things like being aware of frame size, of composition, of altering performance in relation to, to, to the lens and, and, and proximity of the camera, et cetera. A script analysis, which is my particular speciality, and casting. So throughout the, the first two terms, uh, we run simulated castings uh, where quite often we invite professional casting directors to come in and indeed directors to come in um, and run uh, simulated castings and give, give the students uh, feedback. Uh, unit two, critical context and screen study. So this is the, I would say the most uh, academic uh, of the four uh, units. Um, you research uh, a particular, the work of a particular screen practitioner, it might be a director, writer, cinematographer or an actor. Uh, you also research specific genres of, of film and present a 20 minute presentation paired up with uh, another student on a subject of your choice. You get to choose whatever subject it is you want to research. And there is also a, a Q&A in which you respond to questions put to you by both uh, Dr. Javeria Shah, who runs this particular unit, and the course leader, Amanda Brennan. 
uh, unit three performance projects. Uh, there are five that I've listed there. Generally speaking, we undertake all five. Some, some years we undertake four. Uh, the first one uh, speaks for itself really. And we, we start the students on that pretty much immediately. So in small groups, the students uh, put together a two minute uh, short film, uh, which is non-verbal, so entirely based on how one communicates emotion, meaning, thought, intention through one's physicality. The devised drama based on the technique of Mike Lee. Well, um, very briefly, Mike Lee's process, the director Mike Lee's process is cre creation and development of character from scratch from the very beginning, and then developing the story based on those characterizations. Um, I'm currently working on that project with the students right now. The full script project, we look at a full script of either a feature or maybe one or two episodes from a television vision uh, series and work on that entire script. It gives the students the opp opportunity to explore the entire arc uh, of, of a role. The specially commissioned short film, uh, directors and writers uh, come in and meet the students, observe the students at work, and uh, the film is specifically tailored to the in individual uh, students and the showreel project. So that's where students select uh, scenes from either existing uh, screenplays or as Lawrence himself uh, wrote a absolutely superb uh, uh, short scene for his own showreel. Um, and we film those, those, those uh, short scenes. And of course, that is one of the things that you graduate with two professionally shot, at least two professionally shot showreel scenes. <clears throat> And finally, unit four, which is the sustained uh, independent uh, project. And uh, there are three options that you can undertake uh, in, in, in this unit. Um, I should also mention that this unit takes place uh, in, in the fourth and final term where you are not required to, to attend uh, lectures or lessons. So the first option for SIP is to write a 12,000 word dissertation on a research topic uh, of your choice, of course, related to, to screen acting. Uh, the second option uh, is to make a short eight to 10 minute film and a 3000 word uh, research essay. So students form groups uh, of three, four, five people, and as well as acting in the film, they each have to undertake a specific other role. So they may, so they may choose to direct, they may choose to produce, they may choose to write, and they may choose artistic direction or costume design, etc. But they all have to act and they all have to assume one more role in the making of that film. And the 3000 word research essay can be allied to their additional role, or it could be something entirely different that they're interested in that relates to screen acting. And finally, the final potential option uh, has three components. Uh, the portfolio case study, you write a 3000 word essay on a practitioner of your choice. Uh, again, it could be a director, cinematographer, writer, etc. Uh, a reflective essay of 3,000 words on the showreel project. So you talk about things like how you identified your casting, the process that you went through in, in identifying specific uh, scenes and why. And a research essay of 6,000 words. Again, related to screen acting, it, it could be, for example, I, I supervised someone a couple of years ago uh, who looked at the Meisner technique and the Michael Chekhov technique and looked how looked at how one might combine those two techniques and apply them to acting for screen. So that's an overview of uh, the four units of the course, and I'm now going to get rid of the. PowerPoint, and I'm going to uh, hand it over to you for any questions that you may have for Lawrence uh, or myself. I wonder if Lawrence, what do you think is the best way to use the uh, the little hand reaction? What do you think? I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I think if uh, if you guys can see um, the little hand raising option um, or put your um, questions in the chat um, or you can just shout. I know there's about 30 people on the call, but if, if, if you're really desperate, just shout it. Um, but you should be able to raise your hand if you guys know how to do that um, in the in the options and your reactions. Um, and I'll, I'll come around. Oh, here we go. We've got... Uh, Oh, Armin, this, I think this is one for you. It's a good question. It's a good start about the application process. It's, um, can you see it in the, uh, in the chat? Uh, I lost it. Let me get it back up again. Uh, any tips for making the personal statement in your application strong? I would say be honest, uh, be authentic and uh, convey with absolute succinct clarity why you really need to do the course. Not why you would like to do the course, but why you really need to do the course. What do I mean by that? Uh, how is it going to develop uh, your, your existing, uh, existing skills? Where are you at present and how are you going to develop? Can you remember that far back to your own personal statement? Um, yeah, I can. Um, I think the thing that you said that's most pertinent there is is be honest. Um, don't ju and when I say honest, look, there's an elephant in the room for all of us right here now. And oh, I want to get I want to get signed by an agent. I want to be seen by casting directors. I want to stick like kickstart my career, etc. Um, yes, we all wanted a decent agent after we finished, and we all wanted to be seen by the best casting directors and kickstart our careers. But there's got to be a a deeper reason why you're interested in the course and why you want to improve yourself as an artist. Um, so honing on that would be my only advice. Don't just put, oh, I want, I want to get signed by Curtis Brown and, and be in the next A24 flick. Like, come on, we can do better than that. Anyone else? <clears throat> Bitota, is that, how do I, how do I pronounce your name correctly? Bitota, I mean, yeah. Um, my question is just how much freedom is there to undergo independent projects that you want to do apart from the curriculum while um, on the course? So when you say how much freedom, uh, are you, is, is your question related to if, if you're a working actor, if you're offered professional work? Uh, no, no. More so like collaboration with other students apart from the curriculum, if you want to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the um, there is the potential, always the potential, to collaborate with other students, not only your peers on the MA Acting for Screen, but also with students on, on, on other MA, MA courses. Um, uh, however, I, I would say and, uh, that the, the course is all-consuming. Uh, it's, it's intense. Um, as I mentioned, it's only three terms, you know, it's a year's course, but it's only three taught terms. So there is a lot compressed uh, into, into the, 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 the period of time that you're actually studying on site at, at, at Central. Uh, so yes, the options are always there, but whether one has the time to exercise that option okay. is debatable. Thank you. Sina, Sina, is that correct? Hello, Sina, you may need to de uh, switch your mic on. You're on mute. Uh, okay. We go to, uh, we go? Oh, here we go. Sina, you uh, you can hear us because she's putting messages in the uh, in the chat, but we can't hear you. You're still on mute. You raise your hand for a question. Oh, should we go to Danielle? I think you were just... Yeah, so, sorry, my apologies. My apologies as I'm at... Oh, have we got um, there? Yeah, I, I apologise. I'm, I'm at work currently uh, while I'm doing this. Uh, so as you can see, we, we are actors, got to do whatever we can. Um, <laughs> but basically, uh, I, I have a question for yourself, um, just going off that. I've, I've recently acquired Spotlight, and, uh, but I've managed to lose my agent who's based in Wales, there's a long story, but basically it just felt like I was ticking a, a, an ethnic minority box. But basically, uh, 
as an independent actor trying to gain work, um, what advice would you give? What advice would I give? Um, so my remit, uh, so no, that is a really good qu question. Uh, my remit is this evening is to talk about the course and the content of the course. So I will very briefly say, say, say one thing, that we encourage all our students uh, once they graduate to generate their own work as much as possible and to not solely rely on an agent uh, for, for their work. Um, I, I, I have no idea, obviously, of your personal circumstances. From the little bit that you've shared with us, what I, I would venture an opinion. And the opinion is that sometimes it's, it, 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 it's potentially better to be independent of an agent if that agent is not actively, uh, sorry, we're being slightly just disturbed there by something, is not actively looking looking for work for you. So, try, so two things, try and generate your own work and then you yourself can look at the avenues like Spotlight and Mandy that are, that are uh, and uh, uh, what's the casting, there's the other one. Um, the, the name is backstage as well. On the backstage, back yeah, backstage. Look, look at all those and just keep plowing on. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, no next in line was Danielle, and then it's Maya. Uh, so, Danielle, uh, I'm just so you don't get um, overlooked, you've had your hand up for a while. Thank you. And um, I'll lower it now. Um, yeah, I was going to ask if someone does have. Um, acting work come up during the course, how is that dealt with typically if they do have the opportunity for professional acting work come up? Yeah, so um, you would have to make a request to the course leader, Amanda Brennan, and she would make a, a, a decision. So ultimately the decision is, is hers. And it's dependent, I would say, on, on what, what, what the work is. So Danielle, if you were to go to Amanda and say, look, I've got, I've been offered uh, a day's shoot with, um, uh, with Spielberg on his, on his latest, then, you know, I can guarantee you that Amanda would say, you know, absolutely, yes, yes, go ahead. So she's not unreasonable, um, but our expectation is that our students commit to what is a full-time course and only in very rare cases will we make an exception. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, um, it's a question uh, from Maya, Sara Sauke, and it's, uh, I've read on the website, if an applicant does not hold a degree, et cetera, the applicant may be eligible for an interview. Could you elaborate on the interview process and what else would be considered if I had to undergo that process? Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're quite right. Uh, you don't have to have a degree to do the MA. And what we are looking for uh, in the audition is potential, uh, potential to reach a certain level uh, uh, throughout a certain level of skill uh, throughout the, the, the training. So at the audition, uh, uh, through the audition process, we are looking for a level of fundamental skill that we can build on uh, and improve within a very short space of time. So generally speaking, if, if people, if, if we reject people, if we say no, it's because our belief is that they do not have a level of fundamental skill currently for master's, uh, master's level. That leads nicely onto the next question, Armin, from Honor, which is what kind of past experiences are you looking for um, in candidates? Yeah, so that is a variable. We are looking, of course, for acting experience, but not necessarily screen acting experience. If you have some screen acting experience, all the better. And that could be anything from films you've made yourself to professional work. Uh, but, you know, but there's, there's no uh, um, prescription uh, related to, to, to what the screen, the screen acting work is. Um, but definitely we are looking for, for acting, acting experience. 
Um, I think we'll go on to the next three who are very quickly in line at a similar time. So apologies, Shelley, Olivia and Sandra. If we go to you first, Shelley, if that's OK. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Um, I was looking through the programming online last night and um, I guess I'm curious about the content of what would be what would be learned as an actor. Uh, I started off as a child actor here in New York um, in the union. I have a master's level degree. I'm a professional dance movement psychotherapist. We do a lot of work in performance and embodiment. Um, but I really would like to take the time now, stepping away from that career and studying more about acting, particularly for film, but I have a strong interest in the art of acting um, on camera. And so I'm just curious about the content of uh, the coursework and um, what that is. I did read about it, but I'd love to hear about it. It, it is very, very practical. So uh, the majority of the work is practical. We get students in front of the camera on day one. Um, you, we believe that you learn through experience of being in front of the camera. Uh, with regard to methodology and technique, we don't uh, adopt just one methodology or technique. We adopt a variety of methodologies and techniques. But um, there, is one, there is one specialism that our course leader uh, utilizes, and that is the Michael Chekhov uh, uh, technique. Um, uh, but she doesn't exclusively use that, but that is her specialist area. Um, so I would recommend after this session, if you, if you, you may already know Shelley about the Chekhov technique, uh, but if you wanted to research the Chekhov technique, then that would be the one to, to look at in more detail. Thank you. Um, Olivia, I was going to go on to you next, but I've just seen in the chat that based on priority, Oriane's currently driving. So um, I was hoping if we could uh, answer Oriane's question just so she could get off the road. Um, uh, Oriane sa said, is there an age limit to participants in the program? Armin, uh, I'll let you answer that one. No, there isn't. There's the short answer. Uh, the eldest student I've had on the course has been nearly 50. Um, and then the next question is one for me, which is, um, how did my skills improve upon completion of the program and how did it help my career? Which is a good question. Um, and I think in terms of how did my skills improve, to, to quote something that Armin um, has used in the past, it, firstly, it kind of makes you director proof, i.e. I'm, I guess, able now to just land on set and be equipped and have the skills to work with both di different styles of director. Um, but also give me the toolkit that I need to um, apply different techniques, depending on the character, depending on the script, depending on the story. So in terms of what specific skills, it's probably too broad to mention. I, I could be here talking for like two hours on exactly what skills you learn, but you, you are given a toolkit um, of things that you can use in the room with a casting director or on set with a director. Um, so that's what I'd say in terms of what skills, it just polishes you as a performer. I, I, to be honest, I didn't really consider myself a, a, a true professional until I'd, I'd kind of done this course, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm a professional working actor now, whereas before I was just an actor. So you've got the skills um, certainly to, to make things happen when you're on set and in the room. Um, and I'm gonna move over swiftly to Olivia. Thanks for your patience. Um, and I hope that answers your question, Oriana, and please drive safe. Uh, no worries. Um, I, so I was going to ask about technique um, and you touched on that you don't actually specify um, or have a singular technique that you really focus in on. But I was wondering, because um, I, I remember reading about Drama Center coming into existence through um, Yat and his technique and his mode. So I'm two-part question, wondering if how much of the YAT technique is involved in the process um, or in the studies. And also, um, and you kind of touched on this as well, um, Lawrence, but 
I'm wondering in terms of readiness for the industry, in terms of auditioning, um, you talked about director, like being able to direct yourself, being essentially camera ready. Um, how much of the course is dedicated to that, including, you know, getting your reel together and just literally being, creating the best portfolio you can for yourself? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Olivia. Uh, Lawrence, I'll just address the first uh, question. Uh, so um, the work of, of Yat Malmgren and, and his uh, uh, technique, his methodology, uh, we do not utilize at all on the MA acting for screen, but it is utilized on the MA classical and MA contemporary course. I think very specifically on the MA uh, classical course uh, by one of the lecturers, Ben Naylor, who I believe is, is an ex-student of, of Drama Centre. So I hope that that clarifies which, which course uh, uses, uses YATS, uh, YATS technique. Uh, and now I'll hand you over to Lawrence. Yeah, thanks, Olivia. That's a really good one in terms of how practically does it prepare you for industry. Um, so I hope this answers the question as well. So every Friday we'd usually have a different um, either casting director in or agent and we'd be given scenes either on the Tuesday or Wednesday, but sometimes Amanda would send them through on a Thursday, and um, which was always a bit of a challenge given the rest of the work we had to do. But um, So every Friday was usually a different casting director or an agent and you'd, you'd get three takes at a scene, you'd get some really useful feedback and you'd basically just have mock auditions. Um, on, on, a, on usually on a Friday, um, and that happens throughout the entire year. Um, there's from the beginning, so, sorry, from the first yeah, semester. No yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, from the first semester for sure. Yeah, um, I think it was our like second or third week we had someone in. Yeah, we were absolutely shitting it to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. But, it's, but it's great, and and once you've had that experience and you've been thrown in the deep end like that. Um, yeah, it was one of the, the it was one of the best things that could have happened to us at that stage, and especially because we just started the course and we, there was still a lot going on regarding COVID restrictions and a lot up in the air. Um, Amanda was and Armin came to the decision: let's just get these guys in front of some big dog casting director and and just see how they cope. Um, and it's nerve wracking, but once you've had that experience, it does harden you going forwards. Um, but yeah, every Friday, if, if that answers your question in terms of practical stuff to actually prepare you for industry. Yes, there's also really good advice on, on sort of CVs, spotlight profiles, show reels. Amanda and Armin are great. At the amount of show reels that these guys have to sit through anyway, they are great at reordering scenes and, and giving you uh, material to try for your reel. Um, and then we've got... Our but you do shoot... Sorry, you do no, shoot no. a reel? Yeah, yeah. So one, one, of, the, one of the actual... The assessed projects is um, the, the actual show reel. Um, Armin, how many? It's usually two scenes. Is that right? It's usually two scenes. Yeah, yeah. A minimum, I'd say, say so of two scenes uh, for your show reel. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. So there's there's that, and we've also got our industry liaison officer, Charlene, who is the the, the middle lady between us as students and the agent. She's got a massive spreadsheet with all the, the agencies and their contact details and. Um, showcases she organizes etc things like that so there is a lot of industry contact directly and indirectly that prepares you for that and there so you mentioned showcases is there a showcase that is orchestrated yeah yeah so we, uh, last year and this year that it was online but we also had an in-person one as well this year um so yeah we had two showcases a mini one and a main one um, one in july and one in september I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to um, hand over to Sandra, who's been waiting um, very patiently. Thank you. Oh, it's all good. Um, hello. Um, okay, my English is a little rusty I'm from Germany. And so it's like a bit. Wee. Um, I wanted to ask you already, like, kind of answered the question, because I'm right now I'm a musical theater student and I really want to get into acting more because like we do a lot of dancing and singing. And I was wondering if your course, because I'm really interested in screen studies. But I really want to get like a solid foundation or like a toolkit, like you also said. And do you think that your course could offer this on top of all those other things, and auditioning and screen tapes we're doing, uh, not screen tapes, show reels and stuff like <laughs> we're doing. Do you think like that there's still enough time to really get into 
acting and because I'm really eager to learn all the techniques and stuff like that. Okay, wow. I'm just... <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely, because the the, the, the main focus of it is to develop your, your acting acting skills. Uh, there will be classes where you are not in front of a camera, but we try and get you in front of a camera as much as possible. But week on week, there are classes where we are solely focused on developing and honing, honing your act, acting skills. We currently, I mean, every year we take on, not deliberately, but every year we take on students who have a musical theatre background. Off the top of my head, I think in, in this year's intake, there are at least three uh, musical theatre uh, 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 graduates or from 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 other other schools. Um, it's early days with them. We're only five six weeks into our first term. Um, but what 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 I'm working with them specifically is is trying to contain what is generally a quite a a, a large performative um, habitual way of being. Uh, uh, in their acting and just trying to contain that so that they get more of a feel for what it's like in front of the camera. Um, if we go next to uh, Nata, if I pronounce that correctly, um, and then um, Simi and Danielle. And Danielle, I'm wary that there was a question in the chat as well that we've not answered yet, but I'll, I am going to come to it. So yeah, Nata, Simi, and then yourself, Danielle. Hi, thanks. Um, well, I'm from Mexico, and my question is, is there any scholarship for, for me in my case to apply for the course, or I'm just like a dead guy in a dead end street? <laughs> um, I, I, so that, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but I, I, if, you, if you go on the website and write admissions, so if you look for admissions on the website, they will be able to answer questions related to scholarships and finance. Yeah, it's a good question, Nata. I apologize, I don't have the answer, but um, they, they, you'd have to write to them. Okay, thank you. Um, and next, uh, thank you for waiting patiently, Simi. Hi, um, I'm... So I'm from, I'm currently in Cov Uni, I'm in my final year of theatre and professional practice. I had a question, I think it's low-key been answered in the chat, but I was going to ask um, how long the application process is, is there a deadline to it? Because normally like um, normal deadlines for undergrad courses are in January, so I just assumed the same for postgraduate courses. So is that the same for this course or it just goes until next summer? Yeah, no, so, so uh, Sydney, as I mentioned in the chat, we start auditioning in December okay. and uh, I, there are at least one or two audition dates every month right through to, I believe, the end of May, early June. So as long as get, get your application in as soon as possible and you'll be sent an audition date by which you need to submit your tape. If you can't get your tape in for that, that date, don't worry. Just let them know that you'd like a, a later date and they'll ask you to submit for that date. Okay, I also, I also have like a second question just to be really cheeky, um, but it, it's more for Lawrence. I wanted to ask what, out of every unit you did, what was probably the most challenging for you? And like, what did you gain out of it? Um, it's a great question. And I, I miss it probably a really important one for everyone on this call. Um, the, the most challenging um, for me personally was the, um, the short films that we don't get to um, actually create ourselves. Um, and th there was so much work going on at the time. These were the short films that we shot in June. Um, and Central hires a full cast and crew, directors, writers, DOP, etc. cetera. Um, four short films different directors, different cast. Um, and I found that really challenging because it was kind of the tip of the spear of everything you've learned on the year coming together to a head. Um, 
but we didn't get an awful lot of time. I did not get an awful lot of time with the script, which is what it's going to be like if you land, I don't know, a, a TV series or a, I don't know. If you end up doing any British television, like a soap, things can change literally at half an hour before you shoot. So that was a real challenge for me. Um, and it, what I learned from that is um, how uh, late things can change on in, in, in the creative process um, as an actor. Um, things can change today, but there's a lot that changed at very that last minute. I think for most people, the most challenging thing on the course will be the SIP, which is the sustained independent project where you go and create your own film. You, you form your own groups, your own creative team. Someone writes it, someone directs it, someone produces it, et cetera. Um, but it wasn't challenging for our group because we had an absolutely awesome group and we've made a class short film that's doing the rounds at festivals because we had such a good team uh, and we got on really well and it was a lovely time together. But for most people, I think the SIP would be the most challenging part of the course because you've got to, I mean, we raised just, just over six grand. So you, if you want to raise money for the film as well, um, you can do. So that's a challenge, raising funds, crowdfunding, et cetera. Um, but the SIP would be a challenge for most people. But for me, it was the, the short film just because of time constraints and, and a lot of work going on. But it's all a challenge and it, the, the whole course is challenging. That's the point of it. But at the end of it, it's, it's, you realise it's probably the best thing that you, you could have done. Great. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Um, OK, next, Danielle, thank you so much for waiting patiently. And sorry that we've missed one of your questions in the chat about what makes a good audition. Is it that one? Uh, well, I have another one as well. I have so many questions, um, but we can ask that one first. What makes an audition stand out? Uh, Armin. Yeah, I guess Armin might take that one. What makes uh, an audition stand out? In your, uh, so this is some advice. In your choice of material, I would recommend that you select something contemporary. Uh, I would recommend that it is from a screenplay as opposed to a play. Um, and I would recommend that it is something as close to your age uh, as, as, as possible. Um, uh, beyond that, what makes it stand out is, is, is unique to each audition tape. Um, as, I, the, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, what one of the things we are looking for is a level of fundamental skill um, for entry at entry level, which is, is, is high. The fundamental skill level needs to be high. It's a master's course. Um, but beyond that, I can't give you a definitive answer, Daniel. Okay. Could I ask another question as yeah. well? Okay. Um, if someone kind of like, I think it was uh, Sanja mentioned, um, she, you know, she really wants to work on uh, kind of the basics of acting and just really dig into it. Um, if someone is sort of deciding between maybe the acting for screen and the uh, contemporary, um, do you think it's advisable to maybe apply to both uh, or even try to go for both and see which one works or yeah, how would you coach someone through that? Uh, ultimately, that's your decision, but I would say the the fundamental, or the sorry, the basic difference between the two courses mm -hmm. is is the focus on working with camera. Yeah. Uh, the contemporary MA acting yeah. contemporary, uh, I I think maybe they have uh, all in all maybe. Uh, a, a week in total of working with camera. If that, I don't know for sure. I'm not. I'm not a tutor on their course. But if you really want to hone your acting skills as well as your camera skills, then ours is the course. Uh, I've got a very quick question here that you can answer, Armin. I think in quick time from Angela. Um, she uh, read that the next stage of the audition process has to be in person, but she's based in South America. Um, what's the uh, what's the situation there? Do you get flown out, get a uh, special guest? I don't, but occasionally Amanda does. <laughs> uh, so Angela, um, I know in past years, the course leader has been to South America. She's been to Chile and Colombia and, and, and other, other parts of South America. Um, but with restrictions and how things are shifting the whole time, I'm not sure if that's going to happen uh, next year. Um, 
however, uh, the option is always there that if you are if if you are given a recall um, and proceed to the second round, then there is the option to have your recall audition via Zoom. That will always be with Amanda Brennan, the course leader, and that will always be done uh, yeah live. Thank you. Um, we've got to to um, Hong, oh Grace, sorry, Grace next. Um, you've had your hand up a while. Thanks for your patience. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah, good. Um, so basically, what I um I'd like to ask is, um, well, first of all, I have no um degree from acting. I've never done um acting in professional area but I have an experience of learning how to act for the last um, two years, but while I was working as an English tutor. So I was wondering, um, I understand that you, I need to some sort of, um, somehow like prove like fundamental skills of acting in um, audition, but I was wondering how much of importance do you give to people who have previous experience in professional area? I mean, I don't have any professional like, experience, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, so you don't have to have an acting degree, number one. Mm -hmm. um, professional experience will always be beneficial, um, but it's not a requirement for coming on the course. Uh, so professional experience is in and of itself going to be beneficial because uh, you will be more attuned and accustomed to being in front of a camera. Your skills will be at a certain level. Um, but mm -hmm. we all know there are professional actors who sometimes we think, my goodness, how on earth did that person, is that person <laughs> a living a professional actor? That is, of course, subjective. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, as I just to reiterate, we're looking for a fundamental skill level, which is high. Show us that in your audition tape. Um, mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. Uh, can I have a second question? Yep. Thank you. Um, because English is not my, um, my mother tongue. And I can write, but I'm not a, an excellent writer. So I've actually finished with personal statement like a month ago, but, I'm, but then I was getting a feedback. Maybe it's not that uh, it doesn't have much of a clarity. So I was wondering how much of like importance do you give to personal statement in order to have an, at least a chance at, uh, at an audition? Like how much, um, how much importance do you give to personal statement? Uh, I give a lot of importance to it because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, the personal statement is your opportunity to communicate why you need to do the course as opposed to why you want to or would like to do it. And by need, I mean what is driving you in your desire, in your hunger to develop your skills as an actor and to develop your skills as an actor on screen. You need to convince me in your personal statement that there is nothing more that you need mm -hmm. to do at this stage in your life than mm -hmm. improve your acting skills. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just keep your hands down for a minute, guys. I'm just going to go through the rest of the um, questions on the chat and before answering any more. Um, um, Honours asked um, how many spaces are in the course, and I explained there's 20. How many people apply though, Armin? Uh, I don't have a, a specific figure to give you. Uh, I can, I think it's uh, worldwide. So the UK and worldwide, we're looking at a figure of upwards of uh, four, five, six hundred people every year. So not many then. Uh, next question, uh, Olivia. Um, does the school's industry involvement um, and aid that Lawrence talked about also reach across the pond to the US and other countries abroad. Um, I guess this is a question for both of us in terms of industry reach, um, but I, I'm not actually sure simply because I've only got my UK lens on, Armin. I'm... Yeah. Well, the, the, the agents and the casting directors that we invite into the school um, will always have or always be paired with a US agency 
and the casting directors, if not paired with a US casting director, will have built contacts uh, over the years with, with the US industry. So there is nothing formal in place, but all the professionals we invite will have some connection with the US of, 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 of some sort. Thanks, Simon, I wasn't sure. Um, and then Ayn has asked, do students spend all of the fourth term off campus or is it just three terms spent on campus? Lawrence? Yeah, uh, it's that, that final term is is really where you want to spend it when you're making your SIP. I mean, you can be on campus, but you won't be in taught formal lessons um, and you'll have the campus available to um, rehearse, to, to draft, you can book loads of rooms, draft your scripts, get together, etc. It's a good meeting point for everyone, but there's no formally taught part of the course in that fourth term. You will be uh, working on your SIP. Um, uh, the next question um, is from Christian, and it's a good one, Armin. This is... A I know what you're going to say for this. It's um, he asks um, using an accent which is not your own in the audition. Is it recommended? Not recommended. So you know what I'm going to say. Oh, I know what, yeah, I know what your opinion is on this. Uh, the short answer is I don't recommend you you use an accent that is not your native accent. Um, and uh, because it's not one of the things we are looking for uh, in the audition, we're not looking for people to use an accent other than other than their own. Um, my personal preference is that you 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 use you, you perform in your own native accent because that is how I will see you most fully embodied and most fully living through the emotions and the experience of your monologue without any conscious or subconscious uh, uh, connection with having to adopt an accent that isn't your own. So I would always recommend or audition needs to just go with your native accent. Um, thanks, Armin. Uh, the next question um, is from Shelley regarding um, cost of the programme uh, and financial aid. What I will say, Shelley, is um, they've not finalised the, I'm going correct me if I'm wrong, they've not finalised the course fees yet. Um, yeah. But look at the previous years on the website. Um, and then financial aid, um, Armin, where, where is she best to go to for financial aid? Uh, again, they would need to, uh, you'll need to email admissions and they will be able to put you in contact with the correct department at Central uh, who will give you advice on finance. Uh, and then, um, Anna, what's needed to be prepared for the second round audition? Um, and I believe that's the, you've explained that, right? Uh, yeah, so, um, so your first, so the second round, if you're invited to a recall, uh, you will, you will either in person or uh, via Zoom, uh, have a session, a one-to-one -one session with Amanda Brennan, who is the course leader. Uh, you will be asked to prepare a completely different monologue to the one that you prepared for the first round. And if your first round monologue was not from a screenplay, you will be asked to prepare a monologue that is very definitely from a professionally written screenplay. When I say screenplay, it can be from a TV series, so it doesn't have to be a feature film, but it must be from a screenplay. Yeah. Thanks, Armin. Um, shall we, uh, no more questions in the, in the chat. Does anyone have any um, final questions? Um, on the actual Zoom call, any hands up? Anuj. Hi, Armin. Hi, Lawrence. Um, tuning in from India here. Lovely hearing everybody asking the questions that I already had, and thank you for sharing everything. Um, so I am a professional actor, but I'm, you know, I'm. There, there is this place in my career at the moment where I'm looking for growth. And of course, behold, uh, we have a pandemic. And so everything goes online. Um, now again, I, you know, 
planning to not only travel but also learn from my peers and learn and come out of my comfort zone to be very honest um the question is in regards with the pandemic and the uncertainty how how is the faculty preparing for something that's not really out there yet and how does it really help a international student maybe i don't know how the laws are but is there is there any kind of a besides going virtual is there is there any provision for you know is such a it's such a contact based art form um you know you were drawing from each other all the time so just just wanted to know if there's anything in hindsight you know in terms of planning Thank yeah you. so so we obviously yes we did have to go virtual uh in uh, pretty much immediately in 2020 and we had overseas students um, uh, we had students here from the USA, we had students here from uh, uh, part, part, parts of Europe um, who felt very, very, very isolated. Um, and what happened? They, they returned to their countries and mm -hmm. somehow we accommodated them virtually. So uh, I did feel for um, one of our one of our, our, our US students, one decided to, to remain in the UK, but one decided to go back to the US and mm -hmm. she was getting up at all hours of the morning uh, to, 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 to join us uh, uh, via, via Zoom. Um, but when it became, but we worked with her on that when it became too much for her, when she was just too exhausted, we gave her some leeway, uh, mm -hmm. individual tutors caught up with her at, 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 at different times. Um, so, how can I end this? I can end this by saying we are very well prepared for mm -hmm. uh, for undertaking class uh, in this in in this format. We now know very much what we're doing and we're experienced in it. Um, with 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 regard to uh, the the care of our students outside of the formal classroom situation. There are support systems uh, at Central uh, in place. We have, for example, there is a counselling service that is offered. So there are those support systems in place. But uh, as you say, we're dealing with, with such uncertainty. But what I can only end by saying that in terms of the course carrying on, as Lawrence himself experienced, the move to Zoom, although not ideal, mm -hmm. we found a way of, of making it work. Thank you. Okay. Armin, can I, do you mind if I yeah. add on to that? Um, it's a great question because we had one individual um, on our cohort that was based in Trinidad and Tobago and doing it virtually for about three or four, or about three months, Armin? Correct. Yeah. yeah, first yeah. term, yeah. So it was very strange seeing him in the room after the first term. Um, that said, and you made a really good point, it, as an art form, it is about those connections that you have in the scene with your partner. Um, social distancing doesn't impact that too much in terms of, um, obviously there's a lot of trickery you can do with a camera as well to make it look like people are a lot closer, et cetera. Um, but I thought we would be more impacted by the second lockdown than we actually were. Armin and Amanda did an amazing job of shifting some of the modules and some of the actual activities, depending on the, the nature of the pandemic. When we were locked down, modules came forward then that didn't require, as that were more independent, like the Mike Lee project, for example, was kind of when we were in lockdown and it was mainly character development and character focused. Um, so things like that do help um, as well. If I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, it does. Well, yeah, they, they flex things really well. Um, I don't know how they did it, to be honest, but it, it worked. And the amount of castings that are done over Zoom nowadays as well is absolutely crazy. So we've all got to be ready for it. We've all got to be prepped. Um, Thank you. Uh, next was uh, Natter again. Hi again. Um, this question is for Lawrence. And how is your life now that you've graduated from Central? I mean, what can you expect as a student from graduating at Central? Yeah, great question. Um, certainly it was um, a lot 
uh, easier to get a um, an agent of some substance after graduating, that's for sure. Um, and then I'm having probably about a, a tape, an audition a week at the minute. Um, uh, a couple of features, a few shorts, a commercial. Um, so yeah, and again, that that's just just through having a, a relatively good agent because when you study at Central, it puts you on a, um, I guess, a, a different level. Maybe to, I mean, I tried uh, a long period of time trying to source my own work without having an agent and the work that I've got post central is definitely of a high quality. And so that's nice. Um, also the routines that you develop at central, and this is more to the point, uh, vocal exercises, accent work, movement, etc. that kind of gets ingrained whilst you're on the course. So afterwards I have a pretty great weekly daily routine now just as a result of the course. So I'm constantly working on my craft as an artist, which is great. Um, other things, actor-wise, post-central, um, again, meet people on the course that are working on something um, or want your involvement writing or a friend of a friend on the course is directing something, things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think the long, long and short of it is a lot more opportunity, a lot more good habits, um, and a lot more work coming away as a result. I hope that answers. I was, uh, I didn't give you, it was quite a high level. I didn't give you much detail there, but I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Angela. Hi again. Um, I had two questions. So the first one, um, I was wondering if you had like specific tips for like, searching monologues because I've been in that um in that quest for a little bit um and I was just wondering if you had like specific tips or any advice on like to how to go on that search in a more efficient way um because sometimes it gets like you're just like looking for a million things and it feels like you never really <laughs> you're just reading a million things so I was just wondering if you had any tips for that and then second, um, for international students, do you like offer any courses more specific on accent and like voice training of that kind? Um, just wondering if there's like other tools or um, courses that you have to support international students in that regard. So in response to your first question, I would say, look at the actors, who are the actors you admire, whose work you respect and admire, look at their films, do their films contain a monologue that appeals to you, uh, let that be your starting point. But, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, I, I'm going to slightly repeat myself, find contemporary monologues that are as close to you as an individual as you possibly can. Uh, the sort of monologue that the minute, the second you begin speaking, I don't have to think about whether I accept you as that character or not. I just, but I, you just are for me. Yeah, I'm completely sold on you being that person uh, straight, straight away. In response to your second question, we don't um, divide our students uh, between UK students and overseas students for any of the classes, but what? But there are accent classes, and there are, uh, and, and we do have an accent teacher uh, who will work with overseas students to try and neutralise their accent, or to try and get them as close to speaking a, a UK uh, sounding accent uh, as, as possible. But uh, you'll appreciate that the, there is and a huge amount of course content. So the time for doing that is, is limited. Thank you. Thank you. Final question. Um, Owen, you've snuck in just before the, uh, the nine o'clock. Well done. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering about the monologue. Um, does it have to be, is there a certain time, like how long it's got to be? Like, is there a certain kind of like time? Is it like just two minutes or you're not really too fussed about how long it is? Oh yeah, we are fast, uh, Owen, yeah. Right, because okay. Sometimes, I, oh, let me tell you, in years, and sometimes people submit six or seven minutes, um, and that is way too long. So <laughs> yeah, aim, <laughs> uh, aim for two, two and a half max. Cool. Yeah. Um, thank you. And Armin, uh, I'll hand it back over to you. That takes us to a 
to, to the nine o'clock. To nine o'clock. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very, very much, everybody, for for attending. We're very grateful. We're very happy that you've taken the time out of your day to to, to join us uh, on this on this open evening. Uh, as I mentioned, we start auditioning from December, I think from December the 14th, that's our first one, and then there's maybe one or two uh, every month uh, thereafter. Uh, let me assure you that if you submit a self-tape, we watch it. All first round audition tapes are viewed. In fact, I view, the, I view every single one of them myself, and we have a second person as well. So uh, please uh, do, do rest assured that every self-tape uh, is, is, is seen uh, at, at the first round audition. Uh, if you do have any questions for me, um, that, that you feel you've not, you know, that you, know, you might, we might end this and you'll say, ah, damn it, I wish I'd asked that question. I've, I have put my email address up there and I can see Lawrence has, has added his, his email address there. So do feel free to answer or, or send us any follow-up questions. Um, and the last thing I will say is uh, that uh, Lawrence uh, and his group, uh, his, three of his peers, um, for their sustained independent project film, um, produced one of the best of maybe four best that I have seen in my 10 years of teaching on this course. Um, without wanting to um, belittle student films, um, you wouldn't have known that theirs was a student film. It was so professionally made. Um, Lawrence wrote it and uh, I, I take, I, I usually wear a hat, but I would be taking my hat off to him once more uh, in, in, in your presence. And he is, he is proof positive of how, of how this course works. So that's it from me. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Lawrence, for joining us uh, for this course. Thank you. Good luck, guys. All the best. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.